guys. So I noticed that my Mustang, uh, the Pro Charge Mustang, has a coolant leak. It's very slight. It's around the Teflon tape that I used, um, like the instructions said, for the new uh, reservoir that the car came with, or rather that the Pro Charger kit came with. Uh, it replaces the stock little nasty little bubble reservoir. They actually sell it separate for people that don't really have a Pro Charger, but they just don't want the ugly bubble. bubble. Um, kind of funny, but you know, to each their own. So uh, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna let this car cool down. I've just been racing around in it, so it's, uh, it is very hot. But after I take some groceries inside and uh, maybe have a sandwich, uh, hopefully let the beer cool down a little, we'll start working on this project. Should be pretty easy. I think all we have to do, well, actually, I'll show you guys what we have to do. Just give me a second, let's pop this thing open. so hot I can't even touch the the prop rod thing the heat output of a supercharged engine guys is, is crazy like nothing like this plastic is barely I can't even hold my hand on that that is barely I don't even want to try the metal this is barely touchable um, yeah so this thing right here is leaking at the bottom it's not leaking up here as far as I can tell actually it might be sweating a little kind of smell it and uh, at the bottom I'm definitely getting drips so the level is not really going down but um, I can smell it in the car when I'm driving so I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some Loctite I'm gonna do a little research on which Loctite to use so I have the red and the blue um, they might be the same temperature I'm not really sure yet that's my only concern we'll figure it out so I, I think that's gonna be a good alternative to using uh, the Teflon tape that you see here um, and it should be a really easy fix. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a pump. I'm sure you guys have heard of the Mighty Vac. This is my big pump. This is really sweet for use with changing diff fluid, things like that. I think we can get away with this little guy for the coolant. I don't want to make a big mess with a big pump. All right, guys, the beer's cold and the car's cold. So we're going to get started. What I did here, I actually tested it a little bit already, is I created a hole in this Tide container so that I can prevent splash. So here's how we're going to do it. Well, might be as good as we do. swig of beer here. This is delicious. First time I'm trying this Hob Gusher IPA. Uh, I got the store had samples. That was really stuck on that barb. Alright, got the one off. right there all that red on the tough one and guys please dispose of stuff safely don't just dump go on and while I'm doing this I think we're gonna do some other work too I think we've got everything figured out here. What we're going to do next is replace these clamps. So right now I have um, some metal uh, worm gear clamps. I'm actually doubling up on them because the T-clamps that I had that came with the kit were unfortunately not very nice. They didn't have the springs and they, uh, 
they were popping off. So I had to do two of the worm gear, but I'm thinking these uh, HBS uh, T clamps with the springs will do the trick. So we're gonna, well, we're gonna take the other little guys off. All right, so let's get these off. And obviously we're gonna angle this in such a way that we don't have to remove the cooling reservoir. So when we're getting close, we'll point it that way. Oh, that's interesting. It doesn't really wanna go that way. I'm gonna do it this way. Okay, so we can. So because of the design of this new clamp, it interferes with the coolant hose. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit it from the bottom here and use this angle. Decided to be easier to use a little wrench. All right, now we're gonna take the top ones off, and that should be pretty, pretty darn easy. Those are off. I'm gonna move some of this stuff. Guys, both the new clamps are installed. That's what they look like. I tucked that one down because otherwise it wouldn't clear the radiator hose there. And the top one's just off to the side and we're gonna rubberize it to prevent any false knock. Decided to use the red Loctite. I think all we're gonna need is a pipe wrench here. Now we gotta get all the fittings off. So as you can see, this is where the, uh, the thread sealer and the Teflon failed. You can see it failed there a little too, and I think it just failed everywhere. So the trick now that everything's dry is to apply the thread locker, apply some thread locker. I probably use too much to be honest with you, but I just don't want it to leak and frankly I can buy another one of these if there's a problem. I just want it done forever. This is, uh, I'm treating this as a permanent installation. So that fitting is in. Next, we're going to use this little fitting. All right, guys, all the fittings are in. All right, time to reinstall this thing. All the thread lock is set, everything's ready to go.
We're right at three inches now. Well guys, looks like I'm all set. We've got the thread locker on the fittings and we've got the new T-clamps right there. So then down there you can't really see it. So I think we're, well actually you kind of can. So I think we're good to go. We're gonna give this thing a test drive and hopefully the clamps stay on and hopefully we don't overheat and uh, hopefully we don't leak. Well guys, the car seems to work. So we just came back from the spin and uh, moment of truth, let's see if this thing's leaking. I genuinely haven't even looked yet, so it's going to be a surprise to me too. Kind of hoping we're done. This one looks pretty good. I'm kind of afraid to touch it, it's really hot. Alright, let's check the bottom one. I think it's good, I can't really tell from this angle. You guys can see better than me, but I think the thread lock's doing it. Um, 